Whitetails obviously are amazing creatures. We've had a cold snap recently where it's gotten to minus 40 below in southwest Wisconsin here. We have a lot of snow right now. The kids are off school again today. I think they've been off school the, ma the majority of the time over the last two weeks. They, they've been out more than they've been in. And you look at whitetails and you wonder, how can they even survive? And, you know, and again, we're in southwest Wisconsin here and you go over into Iowa, Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana. Everyone's experiencing some cold weather and the deer have to live through it. Deer are amazing creatures. And what I see is a lot of people trying to help out the deer and feeding deer and should they even be fed. And I go through some interesting statistics and I was very familiar with the UP of Michigan, the deer yarding up there. The biggest winners with the biggest winter kill up there, 95 through 97, uh, 1995 through 97, 350,000 deer died, 200,000 one year, 150,000 the next. They actually have true winter severity up there. And what they found is that the majority of the deer that are killed are fawns and yearlings. And in those bad years, you can actually have a fawn crop of 95% of all fawns are killed during the winter. And that equal 50% of all the yearlings, all the year and a half old deer. So really big winter severity. But let me tell you what that equals. Um, in Elger County, where they had a lot of winter loss, 295 inches in the northeast portion of the county, 185 inches of average snow depth in Munising. And then you go down to about 130 inches in the south part of the county. Those deer are under extreme amounts of winter snow and winter conditions, and they still survive. It's amazing. They are awesome creatures. And that's what I, you know, it always amazed me up there. I lived there for 14 years in Munising. I'm down in southwest Wisconsin now. And I'd look outside sometimes, and the deer are gone. They're in their, yarding, their deer yard areas and just wonder, how are they actually making it through the winter? But they do. They found that deer can actually live over a month without food, and which is just crazy when you think about it. And so if they're even in areas where they're low quality food areas, if they can at least get some food, they can survive. I think about a, a buck that was in the Camp Cousineau Research Facility and they had trap out. They were removing all the deer out of the one mile enclosure, been browsed out through cedar in there, marshes, hardwoods, good combination of uh, different types of habitat. And they took all the deer out and they couldn't get this one buck. It was a buck that was a wily old buck. And even though they had a tracking collar on them, they just couldn't dart them. They couldn't get in close enough to get them and get them out of there. They worried about him, but they left him. And he stayed there and he survived an entire winter in there alone with no food, completely browsed out, no pellets. And it just is a testament that he could make it all those times. They found very, very few deer in those deer yards up there, the Petrograde deer yard, it's a, it's a wintering area right in Shingleton, Michigan, averages about 235 inches of snow. And over all the years of research in their decades, they found one buck, a, yearling, a year and a half old buck that succumbed to winter severity. Especially bucks when they had that lower, that bigger body, they can reach food that other deer can't reach. And a mature doe, it's almost impossible to kill them because they can reach a lot of food that younger deer, smaller deer can't reach. Again, it goes back to very amazing. They found in the deer yards up there that 20% of the does were 10 years of age or older. So it shows how long they can live in this nasty weather that we're having right now. What I found up there and what I've experienced with several deer research biologists and talking to them is that unless it really truly means the survival of the deer herd. And I'll give you an example. The Keweenaw Peninsula up in the UP of Michigan there's areas up in the yarding areas there where there's zero food. And if they didn't supplementally feed, they literally would not have a deer, for, deer uh, herd in that area, meaning they would go away. That is not the case here. When it comes to supplementally feeding, providing corn is the worst thing you can provide for them. Now around here, the deer are used to corn. They're used to that a little bit. So it's part of their daily diet. The problem is with corn, when you introduce corn to deer that have been feeding on woody browse, it can form a toxicity in their system and actually kill them and kill them within days and then actually can kill them within weeks. They can succumb to conditions where they're lethargic and listless. They even list depression. You can look all this stuff up online about feeding corn to deer, but it can actually kill them. And so well-meaning people, they have conditions like this that are actually unusual for this area in Southwest Wisconsin and they're helping deer throwing out corn 
And if they're used to the cornfields, they're used to picking through, then it's going to be okay with them. But it takes two to four weeks for those deer to get used to a new food source that's the opposite of what they've been having. I mean, heck, it's hard for us to digest corn, but they can't get used to that food source within a two to four day blizzard when people are throwing that corn out, so it literally can kill them. So be very careful about supplementary feeding. Keep in mind that there are deer that are living in incredibly harsh conditions where it's even hard to imagine. Those areas get 40 inch snow pack levels, literally 40 inches on the level, and it's hard to even imagine, but they live, they make it, and I'd encourage you if the deer, if you're really more concerned about getting deer through the winter time, create high stem count habitat, create browse, winter browse, so they really don't have to move far to feed. Try not to concentrate deer on feed piles that ultimately attract predators too and make basically feeding piles for the predators too. There's, I've seen that time and time again where there's high predation on bait piles during the winter, winter for meaning, well-meaning people. Communicable diseases where they're spreading diseases by close uh, contact over bait piles during the winter, that can really be a danger to them too. So if you really want to help the deer during the winter, avoid adding corn to their diet unless it's already part of their diet and make sure that you're really working on the winter habitat. You're working on conifer lines, you're working on diversity, brush, switchgrass. Gr switchgrass is the only grass that's gonna stand up these harsh winters um, and can provide some thermal protection. Conifers provide snow hindrance protection. That's why a lot of the deer yards are in cedar yards. They deer form a network, network of trails in there. They can get away from the, from the predators that are in there. They can turn a corner. Coyotes give up pretty quick when they're chasing deer in those conditions. So. Amazing creatures, white tails can survive. They don't need our help much to do so, but we can improve the habitat and that winter habitat for them. That's the first step in the right direction. And I'd strongly advise that over adding feed uh, to their diet during the winter time, especially feed that they're not used to.